Hello and welcome back, although it might be for the last time as the end draws slowly closer. But fortunately it does leave me with enough time to finish off my second DMC-a-thon. And a good thing too, because after DMC4 and the reboot, as well as a bunch of other Capcom misadventures, the company decided to clean itself up for a bit and as of recently has been mostly producing decent high quality games including the latest instalment of the DMC series DMC5 so without any further ado let's make like an egg and get cracking The story is quite hard to retell as it goes a bit non-linear at points, but I'll try to give off the events in chronological order as best I can. The story begins with Nero from DMC4, who's had a haircut and a change of clothes since the last game to make himself look less like regular Dante and more like DMC Dante. He's hanging out at home fixing his van, is about to head off to dinner when a strange figure arrives and rips off Nero's arm. After getting patched up and being given a new robotic arm, Nero meets up with this strange individual who looks like Kylo Ren wearing exclusively goth shop gear, who is referred to as V. He explains that the person that stole Nero's arm is a demon named Urizen, who has created this giant demonic tree that is siphoning off the blood of all the citizens of Not London. After a stint of demon fighting, Nero arrives at Urizen's throne at the centre of the tree to find that Dante and his crew are also there. And it turns out they've been hired by V as well to kill Urizen. Nero sees Urizen kick Dante and his friends asses, and pretty much the same thing happens to Nero when he tries to fight Urizen. With his first attempt unsuccessful, Nero decides to fight a bunch of other demons before heading back to the tree to try and have another crack at Urizen. Even though Nero does slightly better this time, he still gets his ass kicked by Urizen. When all of a sudden Dante shows up in this new demonic form, but before he can get a conclusion, we have a massive flashback to explain what Dante's been up to. The major things that need to be mentioned is that V reveals that Urizen is actually Virgil, who got control of himself after the events of DMC1 and ripped off Nero's arm to retrieve the Yamato that lies within and used that sword to split his human and demon half into two separate entities, the demon half becoming Urizen and the human half becoming V. Taking a hint from Virgil, Dante decides to fuse himself with his sword as well as Sparta's sword to activate his new Sin Devil trigger form. This is where events converge with Nero's story as the new Sin Devil Dante beats the crap out of Urizen and Urizen is forced to retreat to the top of the tree. Oh and this is also the point where it's finally confirmed that Nero is actually Virgil's son. And after a brief break where Dante does this... Nero, Dante and V head up the tree to confront Urizen. Urizen reveals that his plan was to have the tree absorb enough human blood to produce a blood fruit that he could consume to gain ultimate power. But despite gaining this ultimate power, Urizen still gets his ass kicked by Dante. However, V delivers the finishing blow, fusing together with Urizen to become Virgil again. This is where you have your expected Dante vs Virgil fight, after which Nero shows up having fully achieved his own devil trigger form, 
and beats the shit out of Virgil with very little difficulty. After which the game basically ends with Nero heading back to his regular routine of hunting down demons, while Dante and Virgil team up to try and take down the demon tree from within. Gameplay is probably the series at its best. Nero plays similar to how he did in DMC4 with the main exception of his new robot arms that he can equip by either finding them in the levels or purchasing them. And there are several different arms with different abilities. However, they can be damaged and destroyed by enemies if you're not careful. Or you could deliberately self-destruct that arm to switch to the next arm as well as doing a bit of damage to enemies nearby. Dante also plays similarly to his counterparts in Devil May Cry 3 and 4, wielding a few familiar weapons as well as a few new abilities and weapons such as the previously mentioned Sin Devil Trigger, as well as a demonic motorcycle that can split into two buzzsaw axe things, and a hat and scarf combo that can shoot currency as a projectile. And finally you have the new character V, who rather than relying on doing direct damage to enemies himself, relies on summoning demonic allies named after previous bosses from the series to soften them up for him before delivering the final blow himself. Oh, and there's also a Virgil mode, which might as well be obligatory at this point. At this point, I've run up of clever ways to describe the graphics. So, I'll just use this clip to pretty much summarise what my mum thought when she walked in and saw the graphics for the first time. Whoa. It's just an outstanding achievement in pretty much every capacity the graphics could possibly be. And the music is pretty good too, with notable examples being the three main characters' themes. Especially Nero's that's catchier than whatever variant of Covid the media's trying to get us to worry about at this point. You know, after doing two DMC thons, I've noticed a sort of pattern with DMC 1 and 4 being alright if slightly flawed games, DMC 2 and the reboot being mostly disliked by people, and DMC 3 and 5 being generally loved all around. And while there can certainly be an argument on whether DMC5 is better than DMC3, I still think this game is really good and worth getting a good old gob full of. Well, that's all from me. Unfortunately, looking at the way things are at the moment, I don't think there's going to be a next time. Yeah, I've finally got you out. I've taken care of all the drones. All that's left is taking down old bony face. Well, I better get a move on then. You're too late. Soon I shall use the artifact to trap the world in an endless state of suffering and pain. Left helpless until the creature comes for this world as it did mine. Ah, that's what you think. All right, M.M., it's your time to shine. Aha! You can't activate the artifact as long as I'm holding on to whatever the hell this is. Curse you. I guess I'll have to kill you with my own hands. I can only hold him for a while. Quick, grab the egg. I've got an idea. M.M., can you put that thing away for a moment? Oh, okay. Ugh. Magic Fabergé egg, take away the man of sorrow's immortality. What did you just do? Did you hear what I said? I used the magic Fabergé egg to take away your immortality. What? Really? You had this all this time and you didn't realise that that was even an option? What? <laughs> <laughs> You 
know, at this point, I'm not surprised that Jeremy's the one that ends up murdering someone. Okay, I guess it's time to pull a Scooby-Doo and see who's really behind this mask. Holy shit, it's me? Yes, for another time, another universe. At last I can be at peace. But be warned. The creature that came from my universe will come for yours too. And you will suffer as I did. Well, that's a disturbing and ominous note to end on. On the right side, at least we can actually celebrate Christmas, I suppose. Question is, what do we do with the body? Ah, don't worry, I'll just put it where I put all the other bodies. What other bodies, Jeremy? Jeremy? What, what other bodies? Forget it. Guess we're ending on an even more disturbing note. Uh, what about me? What about you? Jeremy? Jeremy? What other bodies? To track the what? Fuck, mostly.